this video, we are going to introduce the concept of utility. And in addition to, so total utility and, and the related concept of marginal utility. And take a look at what these look like graphically, or you know, kind of what we th think might be a normal shape for, for total utility and marginal utility to follow. And that's going to set us up later to talk about how we think consumers maximize their utility. So first off, what do we mean when we use this term utility? Well, we use this as our notion of, or our term for well-being, welfare, happiness, call it what you will. But this is how we, we measure the consumers, the household's well-being. And we think that this is what consumers and households try to maximize. Okay? So very, very important assumption is that consumers try to maximize their utility. Now this is, of course, subject to some constraints. Importantly, consumers are limited by their budget, right? their income, first off. Right? You might want to be able to go out and spend $10,000 a month, but if you're only making $5,000 a month, well, you can't spend $10,000 a month, at least not forever. It'll catch up to you sooner or later. The other thing that constrains consumers' decision-making, what they can actually consume, is, of course, the price of the goods that they like to consume. Right? It's not just about the income, but how far does that income go? And in order to understand that, we have to have a sense of how expensive all the goods and services are that consumers want to buy. And so we'll turn to that in our second video. So right here we have a table. Uh, we're focusing here on consumption of pizza. So in our first column, we have the number of slices. And in the second column, the total utility that this hypothetical consumer gets from consuming each number of slices. Right? So here we have, if you don't consume any pizza, then, well, the consumer's not getting any utility out of those zero slices. Now, that first slice of pizza is going to give this consumer 20 units of utility. We, can call, we often call them utils. It okay? doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just important to understand that this is right, a numerical value that we're placing here. And then if that consumer has two slices, then their total utility from consuming those two slices of pizza would be 36. Okay? Three slices, the consumer would get 46 units of utility from those three slices, and so on. Okay? So the total utility refers to the total amount of happiness or well-being that the consumer gets from consuming that quantity. Okay? It's not per slice. Right? So down at five, that's 54 units of utility for the total of five slices. Now, a couple things that are important to, to note here. First, when we're talking about utility, we say that it is ordinal. Right? So you have larger numbers are better. Okay? So a utility of 36 is definitely better than a utility of 20. But the one thing we cannot, the one thing we cannot say is how much better is, say, 36 compared to 20 or, say, 40. So we don't say that a utility of 40 is twice as good as a utility of 20. Okay? So higher numbers represent greater utility, but you cannot say that twice, uh, a number twice as large, like 40, isn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily reflect well-being that's twice as good as when the consumer has a utility of 20. Now, another important concept we need to introduce here is that of marginal utility. Marginal utility is the change in utility that a consumer gets when they consume a bit more of a good. So in other words, what happens when our hypothetical consumer goes from 0 to 1 slice of pizza? Utility goes from 0 to 20. So that marginal utility is that increase from 0 to 20, which is 20. If the consumer goes from 1 to 2 slices, utility increases from 20 to 36. So that's 16. The third slice pushes utility up to 46. So that difference is 10. 46 to 52 is 6, 2. And then at the end here, notice that sixth slice of pizza, total utility actually falls from 54 to 51, negative 3. Now, does that make any sense? Well, you know, it is possible, right? If you consume too much 
of some goods, your utility could decline. Right? In other words, maybe this, this consumer ends up getting sick. So while they're enjoying the taste of the pizza, the cost on the, the backside there of, of feeling sick for the next few hours ends up lowering their overall utility. Now, one thing that's, that's important to note here is it is possible for marginal utility to be negative for some individual goods. However, we assume that overall, in terms of consumption, that that's not the case for all goods. In other words, we assume that consumers always want more of s at least some goods. Okay? So if this person's already eating five slices of pizza, it doesn't mean that, oh, that's it. If you gave them more money, they wouldn't want to buy more of, of something. They may not want more pizza right now, but they, maybe they want another soda or another beer or maybe something totally unrelated to food. Right? Maybe they want to download a, a couple more movies to watch right? or get a better, better Hulu package, whatever it might be. Right? So that's one thing to note. Another important thing to note here is that look at, look at these values for marginal utility. Right? They're getting smaller and smaller. Eventually, in this example, marginal utility becomes negative. So what we have here is an example of what we call diminishing marginal utility. Right, diminishing marginal utility. And that's the notion that eventually, as you consume more and more of a good, marginal utility starts to decline. Now, in this example, it's declining right after that first slice. It doesn't always have to be the case. It is possible that marginal utility might increase at the very beginning before it starts to drop. One thing I want you to, to pay close attention to here, though, is not to be confused with the notion that, that diminishing marginal utility and diminishing total utility. Right? If you notice, marginal utility, even though it's diminishing right, from the second, third, fourth, to fifth slice, total utility is still increasing. Okay? So that's very important to note. That diminishing marginal utility does not imply decreasing total utility. It's only where marginal utility becomes negative right, that's reflecting a decrease in total utility. Now, what do these look like graphically? So first, let's go ahead and draw a graph with total utility over number of slices. And so if we plot this out, of course, at 0, we have 0 for utility. And then what about that first slice? So if we go 20, 30, 40, and 50 here, right, so that first slice gets us a total utility of 20, and 36, 46, 52. 54, and then back down to 51. So if we grab and connect the dots here, this is what our total utility curve looks like. All right? So notice that it's, right, so as we consume more and more slices, up through the fifth slice, utility is increasing. But what do you notice about you know, the shape of this curve is that it's steeper to begin with, and then it starts to get flatter and flatter until eventually it starts to curve downward right, until the slope eventually becomes negative. Well, what's important to note here is the relationship between total utility and marginal utility graphically. So you know, over here, we showed that marginal utility is what? It's the change in total utility over the change in the quantity. Right? That's how we came up with this column of numbers here. We said, what happens to utilities? We go from 0 to 1 slices. Well, it goes up by 20. And that change in quantity, we were doing one slice increase at a time. When we went from the first to the second slice, utility increased by 16. So change in total utility was 16. Change in quantity was one slice. So again, that gave us marginal utility of 16 for that second slice. Well, graphically, where do we see this in this graph? Well, that's just the slope. Now, if you think about this, right? The marginal utility, and this is the total utility curve. Marginal utility is the change in total utility 
over the change in quantity. So if we're going from one to two slices, what's this? That's change in total utility, which for that second slice was 16. And down here, this is the change in quantity, which of course was equal to one, right? one slice. And so 16 over 1 gives us the marginal utility there of 16. So the marginal utility is simply, graphically, the slope of the total utility curve. And so if we go ahead and graph this one out as well, what would we notice? So given our example here, right, we have, of course, in this case, as we said earlier, a marginal utility that's always diminishing. So it starts up at 20, right, for the first one, 16 for the second, 10, 6, 2, and then another negative 3. So I'm not trying to draw anything too, too accurately here, but you can see, right, you can see that relationship here. Yeah. And so as the slope is getting, right, it's initially it's positive, but it's getting the flatter and flatter on the total utility curve. So you can see that as marginal utility is diminishing. And then once that slope becomes negative for that fifth slice, that's reflected in a negative marginal utility. So now that we've introduced basics of utility, total utility, and marginal utility, we're going to turn to trying to get an understanding of how consumers choose the optimal combination of goods to purchase given the utility that they derive from consuming different quantities of those goods and given the limited amount of income and the prices of those goods. <laughs>